Hi all, this is Mr. Yeager. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm trying to help those that are having a little issue um, getting the moving man FET to work on their computer. So um, I'm basically going to kind of just run through it with uh, going through the lab. I'm not going to give out any answers. I'm just going to kind of show and then you can by all means basically uh, follow the answers as needed. Um, you know, complete it as if you're doing it on your own. So it's like I'm just sitting here with you doing all the directions. All right. So again, this is a FET moving man. I have to say this is from University of Colorado Boulder. It's not mine. It is credited to University of Colorado Boulder. Um, and so um, here we go. So if you're doing the lab, um, first thing is basically, uh, you know, you're looking at the units and so forth. I mean, this is going to be kind of, you're going to probably just mumble a little bit here and there as I'm working through it. Um, see the next question is about the distance that everything is make sure you think about what distance is all right make sure you're reading the directions carefully all right um, there's a question down under uh, making observations about displacement in the directions it says you may have noticed that distance to the tree has been given a negative value while distance to the house has been given a positive value all right what does the negative and positive basically mean so make sure you answer that question all right, so that's the first page already. Second page, uh, still not really doing too much here. Uh, now it's asking about the displacement of the different objects on the chart. So it says, where's the house? So make sure you write the displacement for the house. Where's the tree? Write the displacement. Where are the walls? Okay, they're technically at the end of the ruler. Don't, don't think they're any farther than that. Okay, the farthest you can go is 10 and negative 10. Um, then you basically have a number of questions for you to take care of yourself. Again, read those directions carefully. Everything's basically given to you. A lot of, I'm giving you points for basically every little thing you write down on this. So just make sure you fill in the appropriate blanks. Um, let's see here. All right, so I need to go ahead and set the moving man's velocity. I'm all the way down under uh, part B, speed and velocity, making observations now. So you have to find the unit for distance, the unit for time. Um, and then set this velocity to one meter per second and watch. So here we go. Okay. Okay, I'll just let it keep going. Just reading directions as I'm doing this. Okay. So there you go. I'm gonna reset it. Now it says to go ahead and set it for four meters per second. And you're just comparing what that means. What's the, you know, which one's going faster, okay? Not really trying to make you overthink this too much. Okay. All right, so now we're going to set it for one meter per second and try to go for two seconds, okay? So one meter per second for two seconds, and then stop. So two seconds. All right, sorry, let me try that again. <laughs> See, kind of silly here. There you go. All right, two seconds. You might have to record that. Right. And then we're going to go for at four meters per second. Let's try to, sorry, let's go back to that again, I'm trying to do this accurately for you as if you would do it yourself. Need time to reset, there we go. There we go. So that's where he is after four seconds. A little bit weird with the position there, right? um, but that's fine, okay? I would take this more as you're going four meters per second in two seconds, how far are you going? So I wouldn't worry so much about the 7.833. I mean, how far should you go in two seconds if you're going four meters per second? So don't overthink that one too much either. You can go back and do that with the one meter per second too. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so that's basically the beginning. I mean, that's part A and part B. Uh, we're now moving to the charts page. I know it says to go to this chart page initially, but I just leave it at that one. So on this section now, 
I'm going to be doing a bunch of different motions and giving you some time basically to record what does the velocity and position time graphs look like. So I'm going to get rid of the acceleration time because we don't need that. So the first one says go from 0 to 10 at 2 meters per second, and you're just essentially copying what the position and velocity times graphs look like. You should hopefully already kind of have an idea of what they will look like. Okay, there you go. So that's the first one. So to basically copy those in is what you're trying to do. All right, we're going to reset. What if I'm going to just leave the acceleration one on there now? What if we go five meters per, up, oh, no, five position, five meters per second? So there you go. Record the velocity and distance and distance time graph and velocity time graph again. Hopefully you're kind of going through this going, oh, well, duh, it's going to look like that. Okay, think about it. He's going to constant velocity. So what should that be on a position time and velocity time graph? Here's the third graph. So it's going four, standing still at four meters. Okay, there you go. Position time, velocity time, standing still. All right, next one. All right, this one is, we start playing with it a little bit. He's going out at five meters per second for 10 meters, and then going to come back at negative two meters. So I need to try to time this right. That's okay. All right. I'm coming back at negative two. Okay. There you go. So again, think about it, going a constant velocity out, going a slower constant velocity back. What does it look like on position and velocity time? Next. Now I'm going to go negative five meters. And then two meters, positive two meters back. Obviously trying to think, make you think of like comparing the two. I mean, hopefully you're seeing what's going on here. All right, got two more. So there you go. There's all the constant velocity motions. Now we're doing a little bit of accelerated motion. So we're going to do 0 0.5 meters per second squared. And again, we're only interested in the distance and velocity time graph. Here we go. There you go. All right, so just think about how he's moving. How is he, what, is he getting faster? Is he getting slower, speeding up, slowing down? And this would be negative two meters per second. Oh, wait a minute, sorry. I'm gonna go five meters per second, but have a negative two meter per second squared acceleration. So let's see how this looks. So there you go. So again, think about it. what does it mean when the velocity and the uh, acceleration are pointing in opposite directions, okay? And that's basically it. Um, the last page is essentially a review. Uh, I mean, it doesn't involve the uh, actually doing it on the, the uh, simulation. It says go ahead and make sure you look back at your graphs that you've created right here with me. Um, you know, make sure that you're clear with your answers, okay? Um, one of the things I always say is you cannot say just the line is straight. That doesn't make any sense to me. A straight line could be flat or sloped. So therefore, make sure you're using the terminology in the questions where you're saying it's a straight slope, a curve, or a flat line. They have to be very distinct. Um, you know, you can see you're going to have to find the slope of the graph uh, below it. You're going to have to... Um, answer a couple questions. When it says during what time, two times did he stop moving, I'm looking for ranges. So don't just write down six seconds. That doesn't mean anything. You know, write down, did he stop from what time to what time and what time to what time did he stop? So think about what it looks like to be not moving on a distance time graph and then draw out your velocity time graph in relation to it. Think back to uh, 
your velocity time um, graph worksheets. You had to you had to convert a distance time to a velocity time. Um, obviously, you're, it's all constant motion, so don't create hopefully really dramatic graphs. It's, it's actually fairly boring in terms of just some um, flat lines. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So I hope this helped out some.